Welcome back to Lost in Theaters, the podcast where we talk about movies that have slipped the cracks of pop culture. Cars, car repair, and... I'm sorry. Oh, the Everlasting's <laughs> Fussler! I was thinking of that this week! For those who don't know, we're referencing the classic car talk radio where it's... Is that on NPR? Yeah. Wow. We should come up with fake names. <laughs> like, like, real, right real and film. <laughs> I completely derailed you. <laughs> you know, click and clack. <laughs> the Tapper Brothers. Exactly. Anyways... <laughs> Um, this week, Ruth, our Wait, film. you're Rachel and I'm Ruth. Yes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> also known as... I never prepare for when you do horrible things to my name. <laughs> it's not horrible, it's just different. <laughs> like Muppets. I, yeah. Muppets aren't horrible, just different. <laughs> you know, they can be both. That's true. Horrible doesn't have to be different bad in all ways speaking of which <laughs> coming to our film oh no um ruth yes this week's film full disclosure uh-huh. started watching it uh-huh. at the 45 minute mark what about, about the 45 minute mark i paused the movie oh i thought you started it at the no 45 no no, minute no. Mark. <laughs> i i was watching it until the 45 minute mark paused the movie and did not finish it for a like two and a half days I, and not because I was like, oh, I just don't want to, no, because. Full disclosure on my part, I cannot guess what that means about the movie. I (laughs) was so, I was so thrown off and just utterly horrified. Oh, okay. That I just had to stop. I just had to just get out of that headspace, just like right there. It was just Mm. so disconcerting. Oh. I, and I. I should have known. I, I, I couldn't have known. Nothing. This is why this podcast exists. So that you know, going into this movie, that, like, when you look up this movie, you find people talking about the general plot, which we'll talk about in our medium spoiler section. It we does, will? Yeah, the medium spoiler. Like, the, you know, like. We've upped what happens no, in the medium spoilers. No, no, We're like, in the medium spoilers, we've previously on Dragon Slayer, are like, yeah, it's a guy and he goes into those things. With, it's like a whole thing, right? I remember Dragon Slayer. People have seen that one. It's, a weird number of people that I've talked to. It's true. I don't <laughs> quite know why. <laughs> Anyways, but this movie, yeah, when you you can find like a you know a vague, it it does not does not justify what happens in this movie. It does not. Alrighty. Australia <laughs> needs to answer for this. Oh, <laughs> it it just it's it's an Australian it's film. It's another Australian directed one? by Alan Madden, which makes me think that it's uh, people in Australia might know about this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it's one of those movies that if people did know about it in American pop culture, they would really know about it. Okay. Um, but I think much like, so, so the sensibility of the movie is kind of like British comedy. Okay. Uh, but, but, but not British comedy, like British mystery, British mystery television, you know? The vibe of, um, not British comedy, sorry. British mystery television. Okay. Miss Marple... Um, oh. you know, really, yeah, old ladies solving crimes and being awesome kind of okay. vibe, right? Uh-huh. And even to the kind of humor that it is, and the 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 filming vibe, the music, the music is British, you know, mystery music. Um, but Ruth, what is this movie called? Ah, Mushrooms, nineteen ninety five is when it came out. It's called Mushrooms, and given our love for the fungi and how they grow and how cute I'm giving they are. her a really interesting look. <laughs> look, I, I feel like something went over your head. No. <laughs> no, it, that, it didn't. And I I I went, looked into it and I was like, is it going to be about psychedelic mushrooms? No. It is not. It is not about that, Ruth. It's No. It's, you don't understand. Anything to do with mushrooms. Is it like a joke? Is bound to go like, off the rails. No, it just. <sighs> <laughs> I don't think Even so. Even regular, never like edible mushroom. It doesn't matter. I don't think that's what it is, Ruth. It just didn't give that. It just, it just. Uh-huh. The vibes weren't there. Yeah. The vibes weren't there to prepare me in any way. Oh, no. In any way. It. Oh my goodness. It. Um. Who? If you. If you like non sequiturs. If you like thing, things that don't make sense, like match. If you like things that, you know, like, here, I have this Barbie doll. And they're like, and here, I have a lawnmower. A dead fish. Not that you're going to mow over the Barbie doll. I'm not saying that. But, like, now yeah. they're, like, Why does a everything full, get violent when Barbies are introduced? I wasn't on purpose. It's just, like, 
like a weed whacker, for example. Here's, no! Here's, or no! A, or a bicycle, a full grown. I'm saying think things in our garage. Like, think of <laughs> anything in our garage, okay? And, like, a new Barbie doll, you know? Destruction ensues. No, it's okay. not destruction. <laughs> it's just, there they are together. <laughs> Tea bag, Barbie tea, doll. Tea bag, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like these two things. That that is the general chaos of this film. Um, in because like I said, it feels sort of like a detective movie, but it, and it is, but it's not. Additionally, uh, uh, if you like dark comedy, okay, dark comedy. And when I say dark comedy, I I, I thought I thought I liked dark comedy, Ruth. I don't know. Oh. I think I I thought I did. No. You know, generally <laughs> generally darkish comedy. No. <laughs> this this was a whole new level. Yeah. Okay. This is a truly horrifying comedy. Yeah. This was so dark you lost it's funny to me. Oh, it no. was and it wasn't like, you know, criminal minds dark. It's not like that. I don't think criminal minds is It's not comedic. Right? But well, it's dark. It's kind of dark. It is. I think it is. It talks about really sad things. Well, I think dark things that go wrong with comedy, I think horror thriller stuff. Mm. No, like not slasher. E- not even that. So don't even think that, okay? This just, this went a direction, and, and if you get, again, if you get to the medium spoiler section, I will tell you what's happening, because, because it needs to be said so that people are prepared. What would you rate this movie? Uh, it's rated PG-13, and I think that's I think that's right. I think it's the right rating for this movie. Really? Yeah. I cannot figure out what you are freaking out about. <laughs> Ruth, I know. I know. I just, it just didn't, I just didn't see it coming in any way. And are I, mushrooms actually involved? That's the other thing, is I thought they would be more involved. Okay? But are there any mushrooms? There are. There are mushrooms. But, uh, but again, <laughs> it's just not prepared in any way for this. Okay. Um, so if you want a really jarring film, uh, if you like detectives, detective, like British detective TV shows, but then you also want something horrifying, watch this one. <laughs> you know, uh, this might be Mom's Alley. No. Okay. No, it is not. That's I don't think so. Thing. That's what you think. You think. You think, right? So when you recommend, <gasps> so when you give that recommendation, yeah. I think mom oh no so are there any other words you would like to give your audience that would oh. redirect them promptly oh <laughs> oh um uh, uh like those sounds oh, oh no 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 do you know that scene in um the lord of the rings in the third lord of the rings where denethor eats dinner yeah you know how you watch that scene the and you're tomatoes like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's the vibe. No one wants to watch that. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! Okay! <laughs> I'm just a little hobbit crying in the corner, having to sing about the life that's changed and the horrible darkness that's coming. I'm desperately trying to think of something else because you are going to make me cry. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. Don't weep. It's not weepy. It's it's not cry. You know... Hobbit. We're not that <laughs> Hobbit, really. You you can turn off the movie and run away, <laughs> as I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's that pretty much inv- ev- evokes. So if you want to see more of that, <laughs> more horrible Denethor. <laughs> well, the Denethor bit is different than. It's not Pippin. It's Mary. Mary singing. No, Pippin is the one who's singing. Is it? Yeah, definitely. Pippin. Mary's off with the yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Mary yeah. gets to go defeated. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> exactly. That sound wasn't to stop Ruth from the spoilers. It was indicative of oh, Mary's situation. Mary. <laughs> Anyways, um, so do you want to go to the medium spoilers? Uh, obligatory questions oh. about special effects, music. Uh oh. The um, the there is an in the in the credits it does explain that no chickens were harmed in the making of this movie. I am afraid. <laughs> Um, additionally, what's the other random tidbit, Ruth? Um, Are there any magic involved? Uh, no magic. No magic. No. Just magic. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Are we ready for medium? That was, that was a horrible <laughs> something of some song. <laughs> Is it time? But I really ha- okay. So there was just no nothing. Uh, no, really. I, I mean, there. They did have to probably have baked chickens. 
you don't notice any special effects now. And actually, visually, again, I say British mystery drama that was gonna be my next because question. it is from the nineties and it does have that kind of grainy television okay. feel to it. Uh, visually. There's no particularly notable filming style. Um other other than like I said, it is so British mystery in style. Like if you can if you have a visual for that. Are there creepy vibes? There should be. Okay. There isn't. Okay. They play that to their advantage. Okay. It has not creepy vibes. And yet, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Until you get to the den of four parts. And then you're like, no. Does it have a genre, officially? I believe it's dark comedy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It should just be dark, though. Uh, no. It, I mean, I think for some people it's funny. And it is funny, but it's, oh, if you're not prepared, it's not funny. Okay. And I might never go back. <laughs> uh, okay. You, did you finish the movie? I did. I finished. I was very proud of myself. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I shall be fine. Uh, on a scale of bug to, I don't know, Shakespeare? Oh, yeah. No, actually, it's so interesting because it's a different horrifying than bug. Uh-huh. Because bug is so horrifying. Yeah. Um, and... Shakespeare? Or are you just saying Shakespeare's the least horrifying thing in existence? Mm. <laughs> I was gonna say Teletubbies, but those are like um, up there. Sometimes they're Teletubbies. Yeah. Actually, I've heard Shakespeare weird because it's so wordy that you have to like understand what's going on to understand what's going on. Yeah. And if you don't, whereas like Bug just shows you the skin yeah. for it. Um, I would put it in the Bug category, like hardcore, hardcore. Um, uh, different vibe. Different but vibe. Same horror. Just same. Just having to stop. Okay. Uh, just having to just be be done. Yeah. 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 I don't right? know why Shakespeare just seems safe to me. I know that, like, objectively, if you're just, like, taking events, that's not. But, like, it has, I don't know, the tone of it is just so different. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, medium? Medium scores? Yeah, here we go. Okay. Okay, so here's Did you just the beat your chest in, like, a mea culpa <laughs> mode? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's just how you do it, man. Okay, so... Um, medium spoilers, here we go. Ruth, okay, the, the synopsis of the plot is that there's two old women, okay, and they're living okay. in this house and they're looking for a, um, uh, what's it called? Not a, not a caller, a, um, a house person to live in their house. A, a, oh, okay. A renter? They don't call it a renter in England, they call it a, Just it's actually Australia. A person who lives, or yeah. a, to let the place, uh, I don't know. It's not a steward. Oh uh, steward? No, it's not that either. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Stuart. <laughs> anyway, I'm Stuart. They're looking the house. for someone to rent a room from them. A boarder? No. Yeah. Uh anyways. Helen. And so <laughs> maybe anyways, and they um in the process someone dies. And then someone someone dies as one of their people, and then at the same time a cop moves into their house, and they have to deal with hiding this body. What? They didn't kill the body. <laughs> they just they have to deal with this body. Um, what do you mean someone dies? Someone dies, and they have to deal like not one of them. Someone who was rooming in their house dies. Oh, so they have multiple peoples? Well, they just they neither of them knew about the other one. What? And then the guy dies, and now... What? Yeah. <laughs> now they have to deal with the body. Okay, so what? that right there, that right there, right, sounds... In the story, in the movie's called Mushrooms, right? Uh-huh. And so you think, oh, oh, what do you think happens? Uh, he's throwing mushrooms in a closet. Exactly, yeah. You know, that, that seems... Because he's left to rot Because they, they have to figure out what to do with the body, and so they think of mushrooms or something, right? Yeah, that checks out. And I was like, okay, well, let's see where this goes. Maybe, uh, who knows, right? It could... No! <laughs> no, Ruthie! Oh, no. Okay, here's the major spoiler. At the 45 minute mark, they have dinner! Uh huh. And they accidentally eat him! <laughs> There's accidental cannibalism! <laughs> Okay. It was horrible! <laughs> and the movie does nothing to acknowledge that this is, like, bad. I... It's, it's just... <laughs> the 
maybe I'm just jaded. Is there something about how it was filmed? Yes, it's Denethor! <laughs> oh, oh, okay, Denethor, oh, not okay. It's, it's so <laughs> awful, because it's an accident. Oh. It's an accidental consumption of human flesh, and it's just the worst thing you've ever seen. Oh. I was, it was so bad for <laughs> For some people, this is an endorsement. <laughs> exactly. That's why, like I'm saying, if this movie was known, people would know about this movie, okay? People would know, Ruth. But they, but they, but no. Oh, they don't. Okay. Somehow it's fun in the radar and little unsuspecting Rachel. <laughs> was like, you know what? Maybe you should be looking at more international reviews. <laughs> I looked at an Australian review, and all they gave was that little synopsis. Once again, when they should consider that it's from Australia. I well, you know, I mean, I, that's the thing about I've I've recently encountered the Australian comedy scene, and it's just it's a different terrain, like more surrealist. The modern one is a little yeah, is more. Is there a reason we've watched like two movies? From no, Australia that was actually coincidental. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know it was from Australia. I thought it was British at first. Um, yeah, it was. I just so it, I suppose that I don't that's why I'm saying someone from Australia please contact us <laughs> tell us that you either do or tell us what's the response is you Australians think this is wild do they do they watch this movie is it fallen has it through, is it slipped through the cracks of Australian pop culture as well we just we need to know <laughs> this is like I don't Ruthie it was awful <laughs> So, uh, what happened next? Well, that's the middle. Um, I'm sorry to spoil it quite like that in the medium spoiler section, but I just felt like people should know, Yeah. getting into this movie, what they're getting in for. I don't think that's a PG-13 thing. You don't think so? No. You think it's a rated R thing? Is that the next one? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. I feel like there should be an in-between. Well, no, because <laughs> it's like, it isn't, it isn't, I think PG-13 usually is has to do with, like, language and graphicness. Okay. Right? And actually sometimes traumatic things. What about psychic damage? Exactly. <laughs> this was psychically <laughs> detrimental. Okay. I just feel the psychic pain. The psychic pain, Ruth. Yeah. Oh, my Lanta. Oh, my goodness. You don't take Lanta. I don't take Lanta. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know my Lanta is its name. Oh, I don't take my Lanta. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. It has nothing to do with Atlanta. I realized I think you didn't know that. No. And I was just butchering the word there. Yeah. No, no, it's Melanta, <laughs> isn't it? Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. It's an antacid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that makes, it sounds like more like Benadryl than ever. Anyways. <laughs> um, speaking of which, stomach problems. Um, would you have questions, thoughts, concerns? I want to know what happened next. Okay. We gotta go to ma major spoilers now. Are we? Wait, no. What oh. about like just the, the thing that happens next in the movie? Oh no, like... that's the major spoiler. You can't know the conclusion. Okay, <laughs> this is why I'm confused. <laughs> but anyway, I just had to give the PSA. Just the, oh, yeah, yeah. Chickens play a major role in the film. I going forward. Mm -hmm. In our next podcast yeah. that covers cannibalism, <laughs> can we mention that as like the first thing? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> we will. We, we will mention the casual cannibalism. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Just so people are aware. Do you understand my my well, concern in yeah. the first part? Yeah. About just maybe. Oh. Again. I'm not horrified by much, Again, apparently. You no, know, it, it was definitely the way they filmed it okay. as well. The okay. Denethor part. Yeah. I mean, like, like is it Medea ate her children? Yeah. It's like these horrifying Greek myths, right? Yeah. You can, it's one thing to talk about horrifying Greek myths. Actually, I think Medea fed her children to... To what's his name? Yeah. Atreus, maybe? Jason? I think it's Atreus. Atreus? Oh, I've never goodness. even heard of Atreus. I'm, it's the curse of the house of Atreus. Oh, I do know that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember which one gets... Yes, anyway, awful situations, right? 
Um, and it's one thing to like discuss them in, Yay, Greece. in you know <laughs> ancient Greek mythology. Um, it's another thing to be blindsided by one <laughs> in a British mystery film. <laughs> Um, All right, so full spoilers. Full spoilers. Here we go. Um, Miss was telling ding, ding, ding. before the credits, before anything. There's just this chicken in the middle of the screen that goes. Why is this telling? And I didn't think it was significant at all. Uh-huh. I was like, it's kind of the, like one of those introduction <laughs> things where they're like, "Bow bow 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 paramount or whatever, right? Um, this is not the case. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> it begins at a funeral. You see, you're seeing a funeral. It, it, the town, you see the town generally, and it's a town on a shore. You know, there's a yeah. seashore, and there's a funeral, Jesus. there's a graveyard Seashores. by the seashore, and this woman is looking at this funeral, and she's dripping from her coat. She's wearing this big fur coat, and I don't she's like dripping. That. <laughs> and you think, I thought she had gone swimming, because you see the ocean. And she was wearing this coat, and my brain, I was like, so, so she, some, for some reason, she's, she went swimming in this coat, and now she's not, and so she, then she speed walks home. And as she speed walks home, um, she witnesses this man sort of running around this corner, hiding from police. Uh-huh. And then the man sees a sign on the door that she's going to. And I never read this. I didn't read the sign because it was in cursive and bad cursive, and it didn't rest on it long enough. But the effect was they're looking for a tenant. Okay. And um, I think it's a border. A board. A bo- Anyways. Um, they have a particular word. No, I they do, I can't. Remember. I sorry. Um, yeah. so they're looking for a tenant, and um, he proceeds to go in this house oh. and she runs up and it's her house the oh. scene is very confusing because then he says oh you're looking for a house you're looking for a tenant uh-huh. and she says no we don't really need one and then he runs upstairs and like goes into like her room uh. and she it he effectively pressures her into hiding him in the house okay um and it was really kind of confusing how it all played out. But meanwhile, downstairs, the cops have come. Yes. And there's another woman in the house. And she lives there with the other lady. These two okay. old women are living together. And she says, um, I, you know, I'm gonna... What is that, Ruth? Sorry. <laughs> she says, um, uh, I've forgotten. Oh, yeah, so she's afraid of going outside. Mm-hmm. Um... This other woman is afraid of going outside. And so she answers the door, and she's like, nobody's... They're looking for someone. They're looking for the guy who's upstairs. Right. And he is hiding upstairs, and she doesn't know it. She says that he's not here. We find out that this is a defunct pawn shop. These old ladies are running this pawn shop that that doesn't work anymore. And um, so they are left in charge. And then one of the cops... The older cop starts flirting with this lady, and then he ultimately decides to become their their tenant. They're not their tenant. Their boarder. Okay. And so now both ladies have someone who's planning to become to live in the house. Oh. One of them's a cop, and one of them's the bad uh, bad guy. Right. The bad guy is blackmailing the other lady because she's a shoplifter. Oh. What was dripping from her cloak coat was frozen food. What? And they say that if she's caught for shoplifting, she could go to jail for three years. What? Now, I do not know the legal situation in Australia in the 90s. And I don't know quite the situation here, actually, about shoplifting. I know you're not supposed to do it, but does one go to jail for three years for shoplifting frozen food? Um, <laughs> possibly. I know. Things are messed up enough that it's plausible. It's plausible, um, so they're not making any money from this, from the pawn shop. So we come to find out that this one, one of the ladies is aggressively shoplifts. As in, oh. they have more than three microwaves. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how one shoplifts a microwave. <laughs> and like, stacks of frozen food. <laughs> um, what the heck? Um, Why are you shoplifting frozen food? I don't know. How um, do you do that safely? I couldn't Without it, like. 
defrosting and then no no that's what she was dripping is the frozen food was defrosting in her coat and dripping that's delete that i know (laughs) so this the bad guy figures it out and blackmails this woman into making letting him stay in her room how did he figure that out? Because he saw inside her coat. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it was like that does not equate shoplifting. It was really confusing. If anything, it's like lady is too hot and is carrying around <laughs> frozen food. It was. It was admittedly a bizarre. Turn. Okay. Like I didn't follow everything, and that's one of the things about the movie. Actually, it was very. The decisions people made <laughs> were their decisions and their decisions alone. Like, okay. I never felt like I would make those same decisions. <laughs> in, uh, most of them. Except for the accidentally eating a human. Okay. Oh, oh cannibalism. Okay. Woo. So, um, <laughs> one of the cops, by the way, is, is not n- a nice guy. And okay. then the guy who stays with them is a nice guy kind of thing. Okay. Um, Good cop, bad So, cop. the one, the lady, the lady who shoplifts is very suspicious of cops. And he's so mad that they have a cop in the house. And the other one is says, it's fine. I like him. Um, it's fine. So he starts, you know, getting being a handyman and says he'll fix their gas because the gas in his room doesn't work. Oh. So the guy upstairs has a fire going that the guy downstairs doesn't know about. Oh, no. And the guy upstairs goes to sleep with the fire going. The guy downstairs fixes the gas... But to do that, he turns off the gas. Uh Uh-huh. And then turns on the gas and lights the fire downstairs. Which means that the fire upstairs is still open, but no longer lighted. Yeah. Which means that the room fills with gas. And then he just dies in his sleep. Exactly. Okay. The ladies spend the night in one of the ladies' rooms together, because now they have two people Uh who don't know about each other in, in the house, right? Yeah. They're leaving the bad guy just alone. They don't they are not going up there it's a uh-huh. whole thing um next day the cop leaves and then the ladies who who by the way is looking for the man upstairs right okay because he's part of the people who went to the bond shop to be like where is this guy the ladies go upstairs and they knock on the door and he doesn't answer so they go in and they're like oh my goodness it's full of gas and they can't believe they can't believe he's dead you know and they're like what um uh-huh. it's it's wild uh so this is they, they they were going up there to like kick him out because they were like he's bad um they don't report the dead body okay because the one who shoplifts whose name is millie they i think freaked out didn't they she says they're gonna ask too many questions like why do we have so many microwaves yes that is really suspicious so she's <laughs> nervous about cops snooping around and so they can't report the death but now they have to do something with the dead body um, meanwhile, uh, the cop, the guy, his name is a detective, his name's Harry, um, hey. he's having trouble at work, the, they don't think, they think the, the guy has left town, and okay. he wants to keep pursuing it, but they're not letting him, and it's a whole thing. Oh. So the ladies continue talking, and they, they're like, should we bury him? No, that won't work. Can we put him in the river? No, we can hardly lift the guy. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, uh... They decide to cut up the body. No. And smuggle him out of the house in handbags. No. Uh. Which is horrifying in and of itself, right? Um, but they figure it out. No. And they take the body to tr- the two like two arms. They take the arms and they take them to the train tracks and throw them on different trains. What? Um and uh <laughs> Then they come back and... Just dissolve everything. And this is... So this is upsetting to them. It, did, it didn't go really well. One of them... So the lady's afraid of being outside. It's just they're having a disaster time. They, they, yes. They decide they can't continue doing this. Uh-huh. Um, so... But when they come back, Harry has set up a chicken coop for them. Why he had the audacity to set up a chicken coop just without talking because. to them. I don't know. So Harry set up the chicken coop, um, and he's doing some gardening... And, um, meanwhile, so they have all this human in their freezer in the back. No. And <sighs> then the ladies go to mass. No. Oh, it's the worst <sighs> juxtaposition of your life, man. Um, because then they come back and Harry has made dinner for them. No. And that's when the horrible event occurs. Yeah. <sighs> and they realize, they realize it's the guy because he had a tattoo on one of his on his bum 
and they see the tattoo. The one lady does, and she says, "How did the police officer not realize what he was cooking with?" Because they cut it like, like normal person. Like, how like, did he not notice? I don't know. <laughs> I don't freaking know. Okay, <laughs> it's horrifying. Okay, and um, meanwhile, over dinner, he actually also explains that they found the dismembered bodies, and and so they know that he figured out. He's figured pretty much everything out that he was killed here, and. And someone address those train tracks right over there, right? He's figured everything out, and the ladies are freaking out. It's a whole thing, um, and uh, now they have to figure out what to do with this person. Still, they're like, we don't know what to Is do. Is there some kind of exception in law for people just have like a mental break and <sighs> don't do the right thing with a body? I don't know. No one's taught what to do with a dead body. I know. No, no, un- until it happens, <laughs> and you're like, what do we do? Um call the police you but call there's so the many police. mitigating people factors. are so worried anyways are afraid of the police when they try to mail it they think they think about mailing it and then they say no no um <sighs> and then though this is the thing there i just what was most disturbing is how undisturbed they were okay oh. there was no <laughs> acknowledgement that this yeah. was just horrifying none of them were like oh my gosh yeah. i have to go and cry <laughs> about this horrible thing that has happened um they discuss they discuss themselves eating it again and that was also disturbing uh, and then, they, then they're uh, like no 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 that would be wrong okay great so you know what they decide to do feed it to the chickens okay I and mean, then they decide that they're going to eat the chickens well yeah. because then it gets it's like double they're like this is how uh-huh. we're gonna do it oh my god and it's just there's this disgusting like chickens can only eat so much. Meat pulver- well, that's the thing is the next scene, the next major scene is like a montage sequence of them just literally only eating eggs for several months because they're getting more chickens uh-huh. because they're feeding them lots and they're getting more eggs and they're eating the eggs and it's just it's just and it's so many eggs. Ruth. <laughs> it's it, it's a really well done scene, um, but then. One day in the garden, the the suspicious lady figures out that they forgot to do something with the feces, which also has evidence of the human yes. in it. And she suddenly she has a breakdown and it's sad and she doesn't know what to do. And so, um, but then the other lady is like, "But your favorite, we'll do it with your favorite." And they what? put it. I know this mushrooms have not come up before. Come up before this. Apparently, their cellar. In their cellar, they grow edible mushrooms. Okay. And they fill it with chicken yeah. feces and then grow more mushrooms yeah. in the cellar. Um, so they're, they just have figured it all out, haven't they? Um, except that uh, one day when they go again out together, I think to a wedding this time, the guy does some snooping around for some reason. It was a, it was a reasonable uh, situation, and he then figures out that they have done this. Uh, partly... Because they kept his teeth. This was... I don't know why they kept his teeth. I think they weren't sure what to do with them. So they kept his teeth and put them in a uh, jar on the mantle. <laughs> and he finds why? that... I don't know. Why did they not get rid of this jar? I think... I thought that several times. It, it, it comes up again. It's a problematic jar. <laughs> and, uh... So he figures everything. The chickens, the mushrooms. Yeah. Um. Then that night, they... Actually, that day, they finished... They finished getting rid of the guy. And they got yet they have like eighteen oh, chickens now. And so to celebrate, they eat one of the chickens. No. Um and the dude, the cop, is very suspicious. He ends up having to leave, have a little mental break. Yeah. Uh, doesn't know what to do. Him and actually one of the ladies have started dating at this point. They're having a lovely time, apparently. Um but this chicken issue comes in between them a little bit. Uh, also, it just shows a snapshot of their basement, which is just stuffed full of mushrooms. I feel like the understatement. I what? Could you repeat? Uh huh. <laughs> you just really slid over some things <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, the the pleasant the pleasant dating of those two characters. When did that happen? Oh, How? it was it was because like, she was the one she was interested in him and that and they were interested in each other at the beginning. Really? Yeah. And he, he was, he was, you know... The chicken thing has really come between them? Oh, not really come between them. He just, he just doesn't... Not really come between well, them? Well, yeah, he, 
What's the chicken thing exactly? <laughs> He's figured out that the chickens are uh, eating people. Okay. And they're they're feeding they're eating the yeah. eggs and feeding the chickens uh-huh. to people and he's just aghast a little. And then they he just found he found something on their floor and he thought it he thought he when he figured it out and he sent it to get analyzed and the guy says it's probably poison. We think it's poison, we don't know what kind yet, and now he thinks that they might be poisoning him. Um but he comes to, to terms. To feed the chickens. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's very confusing. And he comes to terms with this idea and eats, he eventually eats a chicken leg he's been holding around all day. <laughs> um, he goes to work the next day and he decides to delete the file. What? That has oh, the information man. about them in it. No. Um, no. Uh, and right when he does that, the mean boss comes in, gets mad at him for continuing the investigation, and gives it to another guy, the above oh, mean dang cop, it. who then looks it up and can't find it. Oh, okay. Which is a good thing. Um, and the cop then has, like, a heart-to-heart with... he He's a uh, widower. Okay. And so he has a heart-to-heart with his dead wife on... A, he's talking to the waves, and it's a whole thing. Okay. Um, yes. And see, here's the thing. I think it, it's supposed to be a satirical movie. Yeah. You know, like, it's supposed- that this scene- I don't know if the scene is supposed to be taken seriously, or taken- Because I did not understand what was happening when the man was talking to the waves, and at one point he just shouts something- He gives a whole bunch of names and shouts something into the waves. I- it was lost on me. Um, cool. But other people might enjoy it. So meanwhile, the buddy cop, the bad cop- Other people might enjoy the- man grieving his wife no he's not grieving he's moved he's he's grieved he's he's okay talking to he's, his dead wife yeah about Which what to do should... with the fact that he deleted the file and is gonna he likes these women and he's not gonna turn them in go enjoy people okay <laughs> so um if anyone figures that out please let me know as well uh, additionally <laughs> um so the in an interview oh yeah so the main detective guy who'd been following, he who lives in the house, tells the women he's figured it out, and at the same time, the bad cop, mean cop, comes over and tells them that he's been demoted to party planning committee. What? I know, so he's gonna throw a party for the whole police department, and actually I think it's a Christmas party? And then additionally to that, um, the bad cop, while he's at their house, discovers the tea. What? Now this is, this is what's weird. He, um... So they decide they're going to have this party for this what's weird. all the cops. No, not just this. All these cops, and they have to feed them all. And so what do they feed them? Something. All of the chicken and mushrooms oh. that they've ever made. And it's not even, like, pleasant. Like, they do horrifying things, like, turn <laughs> the feathers of the chicken into weird feather noodles. No. I know. That was, and they, they everything. they Because they, the cops department is kind of mean to him. So it's kind of a revenge thing. Oh. But additionally, everything. All the mushrooms, all the chickens, weird chicken making montage where they make this uh, humongous amount of food and then plan to give it to the police department uh, at this party, which does happen. The party does happen and they do feed, again, Denethor, hardcore Denethor. Oh, oh my goodness. Additionally, at the party, the guy, uh, the the coroner tells the cop that it was CO2 that killed the man upstairs. And, because he figured out the files. Oh. And then he realizes that he killed the guy upstairs. Oh. Reali- and, the, and the bad cop shows him the warrants for the lady's arrest. Why? Because uh, he's teasing him because he hates him. Oh. And then he then goes... No, I mean, how do they have warrants for their arrest? Because he's got enough evidence at this point oh, to arrest them. So okay. then the, the women have a have a weird, not a weird, they have a heart-to-heart sort of thing where one of the, the one of them, oh, oh, that's why, yes. The the one lady, the suspicious lady has come around to the cop and now is kind of falling in love with the cop, maybe? And the lady who originally was in love with, it's a weird light, love triangle thing. And so they, one of the one of them decides to leave, the one who's afraid of going outside decides to leave. The okay. other one chases her down. Um, they have a little fight. And then it's okay, and they decide that everything's okay, and they're gonna kick out the bad guy, not the bad guy, the cop, from their house. Why? Um, because it's getting between them. Okay. Um, but also this might have happened before because they were both married. It's very confusing. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a very complicated love triangle subplot. Um, and uh, then they go back, and the policeman, who, the detective who's staying with them, is confessing to the murder of this dude, 
to stop the guy with the warrants from arresting the ladies. And then, and then this is, this is the thing, this is the other thing. The ladies then blackmailed the chief of police. What? Into looking at the warrants ahead of time because apparently he had affairs with them earlier what? in, like, when they were younger. What? So they are like, we are gonna, we're gonna blackmail you. They do it very, you know, <laughs> however, they speak very flowerly, uh-huh. but he figures it out. And um, then the goes to the young, the young bad cop who additionally is dating his daughter and gonna marry her. And one of the ladies had given them a big present uh-huh. at the party. Yeah. Um, he gets these, he gets the, the warrants, he looks at them, and he says, you're arresting them for, like, shoplifting? Like, what are you saying? And then, this, the fiancé opens the present and reveals one of the microwaves. What? She's giving away this microwave, so it looks like she's been collecting all these shoplifting things to give as gifts. And then he gets mad, so the, the bad cop is now, <laughs> the bad cop is now ostracized. Um, the ladies, oh, by the way, the bad guy at the beginning had a ton of money. Um, and so, Where which they hid, that? they oh. were hiding it, and they didn't want to use it. Okay. It comes in at the end because the cops leave, the chickens, it's over with, and, um, they use the money to make a restaurant. The end. I will be honest, I, I would watch this movie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, Ruth, because I'm saying the filming style was disturbing. But the chickens. Yeah. Chickens eating humans, mind you, and then humans eating chickens. Yeah. Oh. Oh my goodness. I think... I probably have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know! I don't know. It's on It's on Amazon Prime, folks, if you want to check it out. Because I actually, more than any movie I've ever done before, I want to hear what people have to say about this movie. Because it's very... I mean, there's so many thoughts I need to know about. I really like mushrooms. Exactly! <laughs> That's one of the reasons I watched the movie! And the mushrooms did not have a strong enough... Could I just have a picture of the basement of mushrooms? I could... Uh, yeah, I could pull one up, probably. Okay. Find one. That might satisfy me. Okay, that's good. That's... I mean, yeah, there's one... Only one shot in, in there that was very mushroomy, and that would check out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so, yeah... Please let us know what you think on our Instagram if you can. Call we're at Lost in Theaters on on the on the gram, and um, <laughs> no, <laughs> you can listen to us wherever there are podcasts. Um, additionally, we appreciate your listening. <laughs> Please leave us a review and subscribe if you're if you like our show. Our and um, yeah, we need a more solid ending. <laughs> what we have a song, Ruth. That's our solid ending. We have- no song. The chicken says cluck, 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 cluck. And the chicken says buck, 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 buck. And the composer says da na na na. Da na na na. Is there some way to edit this sooner so it like, cuts <laughs> off like before that bit? <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Ruth, comments, thoughts, closing, closing concerns? Uh, I'm concerned about me now. Oh, oh sister. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, we'll get back to you on that next week. We'll give you an update on Ruth's, Ruth's mental health. Ruth's no, <laughs> no, on her thoughts about the film, maybe if she remembers. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, well, maybe. <laughs> thanks so much for listening. Da-na-na-na. The end. Bye. Bye.